I remember being promised by my rugby coach that if I played for a higher team as a reserve, I would always be able to drop down and start for one of the lower teams. The final game of the season was always the biggest and it came with a special team announcement ceremony. I'd express my desire to play for the lower team as a starter rather than as a reserve for the higher team, but when the team was announced, I was neither. I found myself as a reserve for the lower team. I couldn't believe that I had trusted my coach's word and he had not followed through on his promises. Welcome to the fourth of our Good Friday prayer times. We have journeyed with Jesus in his final moments this day through the lens of John's gospel. In the afternoon, following his trial, Jesus was crucified. But this was not a defeat as it might appear at first glance. It was actually the manifestation of a victory that had been prophesied about for hundreds of years. Unlike my rugby coach, our God keeps his word. And his word had promised that an anointed one would come and suffer on behalf of his people. And that anointed one was known as the Christ. As you listen to John's account of the crucifixion, note how many times John says that this was to fulfill the scripture. So they took Jesus and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but rather, This man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, well, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister. Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again another scripture says, They will look on him whom they have pierced. Our God keeps his promises. And the greatest promise he ever made was that he would send a savior for us. Jesus is that savior. And in the darkest moment, he won salvation for us. And it was costly. For God to follow through on his promises, he had to pay an enormous price. Perhaps you are struggling with unfulfilled promises. Maybe it is a promise made by your spouse, or your parents, or your children, or your boss, or some other person. Our God fulfills all his promises. And in Jesus, all God's promises find their yes. The cross is the supreme example of that. So let us turn to God in prayer to thank him that he is true to his word, no matter the cost. Faithful Father, 
How can we ever comprehend how much it costs you to be true to your promises? Sending your only son to die for us so that you could fulfill your word is the greatest cost imaginable. Lord, we bring before you areas of our lives where we have not followed through on our word and we repent. And we bring before you areas in our lives where we are longing for others to be faithful to their word. May we know your faithfulness to us today in the midst of our hurt and pain. As we remember what it costs you to be true to your word, may we be willing to give whatever it takes to be true to our words. In the name of our faithful Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.